Yes, over to you. Thank you, everybody, um, and welcome, Keith. Uh, before we get into the topic, just some words of introduction. Uh, I hope this is not underwhelming, Keith, because you've got a really impressive link, LinkedIn profile. I know you're currently an interim sales manager at BT, as, as well as running your own company, Sales Marvel, which has had great results in helping organizations uplift the business sales results. Um, I know in your time you've been a visiting lecturer at Aston, and um, I know you've helped uh, organizations like um, Lancaster University turn around uh, their performance for uh, selling master's programs, etc. And before that, you've got a glittering career in IT sales. So um, many people on the call are students and staff, and I'm sure they've had to get used to living life over Zoom over the last year or so. People with more gray hairs like me and you, Keith, probably used to working on virtual tools um, way back when, over the years, you know, working in global teams where you had to do things virtually. Um, you think it's here to stay. Um, I'd really like to understand why you think it's here to stay and the best way of using tools like this. So over to you, Keith. Simon, thank you very much and welcome to uh, everyone on the uh, line uh, this afternoon. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, why do I think it's, uh, first of all, yes, I, I must uh, stress that there are other uh, products out there. I, I've been using Zoom for about three years now, certainly uh, at least a year pre-pandemic. And I first started using Zoom when I realized, and as a small business owner, and I think we might have a few um, small business owners on the line as well, I realized I was spending more on fuel than I was on my marketing budget. And frankly, people like uh, BP, uh, Shell, all those fine companies, but uh, um, you know, I'm, my, my money's probably better invested kind of elsewhere. So that's why I got really interested in, okay, how's, how is there a better way to, uh, to do this? Not my first foray actually i'm going to whiz um i'm going to whiz through this if i may what, what i would be interested in excuse me um is uh if you can use the chat box uh please if everyone's allowed to use that uh carolos um is how confident you are selling or presenting over video at the moment, I'd be really interested in in um, seeing seeing to that if we if we can. Um, moving on, my, my background, as Simon mentioned, thirty odd years in corporate sales. I've closed all sorts of um, uh, deals with um, with clients and former employers of mine. Everything from gym memberships, which is high volume, low cost, forty five pounds a month etc david thank you very much seven out of ten you feel comfortable in terms of presenting i would say that's quite high um and uh, some of the other deals that i've closed have been a gigantic software outsource deal of 1.3 billion dollars and um actually the principles of sales i believe are, are pretty similar whatever you're doing uh Aditola, eight out of ten presenting out of video fantastic well i hope you're going to learn hope i'm going to move the dial just a little bit more for you okay so right now i'm a sales trainer and i also work with a number of business schools aston york uh, lancaster and also um, a couple in in birmingham as well um with the second strand of my business where <clears throat> excuse me and uh, David, thanks very much for that. Second strand of my business, which is uh, promoting the worthiness, if you like, or the esteem of sales as a profession and working with students to encourage those that aspire to uh, joining sales in, in making them sales ready. If you like, that's a particular focus of mine. But where my interest in video goes with was that, and some of us of a certain um, sort of, Age, if you don't mind me saying so, Simon, uh, at least you might remember a chap called Martin uh, Lewis. They're a, the one that used to re read the news for the BBC in the 1990s. But I, I used to work with Martin um, with his company called Telerus. 
and we used to um, sell video, what I would call uh, video conferencing on, on steroids, a, a room that would look like this, uh, where uh, the idea was to suspend disbelief so that the people that you can see there on those television screens uh, are in New York, uh, but you and your team are in York or London. This so happens to be uh, the Aviva room, one of the first clients we ever sold this system to. Um, and the idea was that the, uh, the, the meeting experience would make you feel like you were in the same room. So it would be what we call immersive. And that's the goal, really. So these things at the time cost millions of pounds and required a very, very high grade of um, video network with what's called low jitter. So that when I move my hands across the screen like that, it feels natural and fluid and all of those things. So if you've ever seen a program called 24 with Jack Bauer, they go into what they call the telepresence room or the Cisco room, and it would look and see and feel something like this. The meeting experience is, is absolutely vital. Those are some of the uh, uh, clients that would have bought systems like that. But the fundamental requirement of those kinds of systems with those kinds of uh, investments is that there is an absence of distractions. Now, we've all probably seen that um, um, footage on, uh, I think it was a Skype call with the ambassador to South Korea, who was on the line. And in background, you could see a, a small child, a toddler, open the door and come in and sit on daddy's lap and all of those things. And that, that, that's charming now. But 18 months, um, sort of hence after we've come out of um, the um, not necessarily out of the pandemic, but now we're used to seeing video. Now we're not expecting to see distractions uh, per se. So the absence of distractions is number is number one, really. Okay, so once we've got past that, what we're going to cover in this session is uh, a, I think a meeting has a particular context. Now, if it's just me speaking with um, Simon, with greatest of respect, Simon, over video, we can probably be fairly relaxed in what's going on or not going on. I can have a, a cup of Yorkshire's finest and we're probably okay with that and we can have a productive meeting session without actually having to um, you know, travel, get all of those things. But for everything else, perhaps it's a meeting with a client, perhaps it's a, a sales pitch as such, perhaps it's a job interview, or it's a conversation with your line manager, which we can't do face to, well, we are face to face, but we can't do in person. Or it's a regular team meeting that you might be having. We're having to have it over video because maybe we're spread around the world or spread around North Yorkshire or whatever it happens to be. For everything else, a video meeting is worth paying a little bit more attention to in order that we can have a productive meeting. So I split this up into a small number of sections. And there's what I would call... Uh, pre the meeting, what happens before the meeting, there's your sort of performance during the meeting, excuse me, wrapping up and next steps, if you like. Um, and then there's what happens post meeting. And I am trying to get to the nub of what's different between doing a video meeting and what's doing an in-person meeting. Okay, what we're not covering in this is the meeting research that you might do because I think you know you, you uh, that's outside of scope for this particular session. How to have a good meeting? I'll cover a little bit of that, but it's, that's not what we're majoring on. This is about how to have a good meeting over video specifically. And there's more information uh, on my YouTube channel. That is a sentence I never thought I'd be uh, uh, saying out loud, certainly two years ago, 
but here we are yeah, yeah, post pandemic that uh, I've, I've now got a YouTube channel on the sales marble. There's loads of free content, excuse me, on, on there that you can look at uh, subsequent to, to this meeting. So, so the most often asked question as a sales trainer, as a business person that I get asked is, is this one, how can I stand out from the crowd? Because there's 7 billion people, 7.6 billion people in the world loads of people clambering for attention how can i stand out from the crowd one of the key excuse me, one of the key um, sort of themes around this is is how you can communicate like a pro over video so that you're not making uh rookie mistakes and rookie is not related to age it's related to uh, experience if you like and customer centricity so how you can position yourself as a trusted advisor or a professional. Okay, so for those of you that have got access to the uh, chat box, we've got three images on the, uh, on the screen here. And I wonder which image is it that best represents your remote working or even your office working setup? Are you um, image number one, where you have a laptop on a desk as Probably most people, uh, most people do. Uh, Albert, hi, thank you very much. You've got, uh, you've got setup number two, which is a, a single person with a, a screen that's kind of higher up there. And then you've got uh, number three, where we've got the laptop right down below on a coffee table. Uh, and that's not easy to work with. So we've got some ones and twos. Krista, David, thank you very much for, for that. Okay. Now, it doesn't really matter which one you've got. What's important is that you kind of understand what's going, what's going on in the other person's mind, how they're receiving your images, behavior, how they're experiencing the meeting with you. Okay, so differentiating yourself. Given the uh, limitations of the, uh, the setup that you've got, and no matter how much money you spend on your remote working setup or your office setup that's going to have a limitation of some kind. So this is uh, what I call a Zeman uh, pyramid, Z-Y-M-A-N. had the great pleasure, privilege, working with uh, Sergio Zeman back in the day on a, on a few deals. And um, so if you do nothing, if you're just sat with your laptop as they were in the previous diagram, then you are in the bottom part of that pyramid. You're me too. You've not done anything to, should we say, elevate yourself or, or um, uh, promote yourself into being a professional. You're just, you're just using whatever um, environmentals are around you and uh, making the best of that. And that may be okay. But for everything else, where I think you, we all need a little bit of help to elevate the quality of uh, presentation skills and how it's received by everyone else, there are certain things that we can do to get beyond me to and run up into the preferred. Whenever you speak to you know, Simon or Carolos, it's a, a really high quality because they've thought about what they're doing um, ahead of time or your um, you're speaking to uh, Ching Hui and, uh, and they've made the necessary sort of investments or thoughts that really elevate the meeting experience over video with them. Okay, so here are the component parts then to a successful video meeting. There's you and that's your prep and your content, my slides on this uh, occasion, uh, the messages that I want to uh, impart or elicit, that, that's a function of, of me. I can't do anything for that. That's, that's down to you, so to speak. For everything else, we've got your environmentals. I'll talk about those in, in just a moment. And, and you've got some technology, which is going to be a microphone, a camera, a network, um, uh, a screen. They're, I'm breaking these down into all different components and we'll, we'll, we'll see what that looks like in just a second. Uh, and of course, back to the absence of distractions 
where, so that your audience is focused solely on you, on, on, on what you're saying, what you're delivering, um, what you want to achieve it by way of having the video uh, meeting. Okay, so this was, um, I think, option number two in, in the um, meeting. We have got a lot of those on the line. It doesn't really matter what your setup is. I'm going to break it down into component parts uh, in a moment. Will you forgive me just having um, a quick slow, excuse me. Okay, so key elements to a video call what I call environmentals. And for the, anyone that's been exposed to plant or mechanical and electrical, that, that, that's what I call environmentals. So here, so we've got lighting uh, down the side. Um, for anyone that's into uh, video or film or uh, photography, lighting is incredibly important. I just want to uh, I just want, I hope this isn't going to make you too dizzy, but I'm just going to take my camera off here. So th this, this is me and just show you what I'm surrounded by uh, just now. So obviously I've got a laptop with my presentation. You can see that. Uh, so happens um, I've got a, a bigger screen so I can kind of see what's going on. But the room that I'm in, the environmentals, if I swing my camera around to the right, I've got a big window that's that's fabulous at letting um, sunlight and all of those things in um, come in. Uh, but if I put my, excuse me, so there's, I've got strong lighting to contend with. And also over, over this side, I've got, and you can just about see that there, I've got a, a, um, a standalone microphone. So you don't need to spend an awful lot of money on lighting or on uh, microphones, but it does, really elevate um, things kind of going uh, going forward. And the reason why uh, I point out the lighting there, um, I've got another daylight bulb um, to my left here, which is counterbalancing. Let me just show you what happens if I didn't have that, um, that light. So if I, this is how I look now. If I switch that light out, you see it gets pretty dark in the room. The camera will start compensating for that in a little bit, but you can see that there's a lot of light on the side of my, on the side of my face. It's not really evenly lit. Um, so um, if I switch my light on, then the light on my face is more balanced. It feels more natural, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, uh, uh, and it's more, more believable, it's more immersive, if you, if you like. Okay, right, what's next? We have uh, lighting. So the camera, the, the lighting hitting the face of this person here is evenly lit. And I showed you what happened um, by, <clears throat> excuse me, showed you what happened by um, the amount of light that's on, on that person's face just now. Now, they're using an Apple Mac and the camera on there is, is here. So um, it's roughly at um, eye level, just a little bit above, but it's good enough. We've all seen, if you've seen the um, 5 p.m., <clears throat> excuse me, if you've seen the 5 p.m. broadcast on coronavirus with the p.m., you'll occasionally see um, uh, journalists that are effectively looking down. You can see right up inside their nostrils. That's not a good look. Again, you've got to have a camera that's uh, uh, at the right sort of height. So it appears like you're face to face. You wouldn't ordinarily be looking up into someone's uh, nostrils. That's, that's kind of the point. Okay, what's next? The microphone. I, I pointed out that we've got a, uh, I've got a separate microphone not just the laptop microphone. Okay, so you can, you can hear me um, uh, now, and I'm talking with the, the full equipment plugged in. Now, if I disconnect my, my uh, separate microphone, I'm now using the laptop microphone, which is probably good enough for most calls, but there is a difference. You'll notice the difference between me speaking now and 
me plugging myself back in using the um, the, the, the more expensive uh, microphone, um, if 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 you like. So that's that's the idea about creating better sound, uh, better video. I'm using an HD camera. <clears throat> Most brand new laptops or an, uh, an iMac will come with an HD camera, but if you've got an older laptop, you may want to think about um, investing in an HD camera or and an HD audio. Uh, microphone and for less than a hundred pounds you should be able to get something um, that's that elevates your game that's the point okay what's next now uh, the other thing on microphone is there needs to be clear line of sight between your mouth and the microphone and while that sounds obvious um, many people will present it will be presenting and they will have papers on their desk and um so if you have got a whole um excuse me. if you have got a whole bunch of papers i see it happen all the time and you have it across your microphone it's going to get very very muffled my microphone's probably still okay but it's going to get very very muffled and you won't even realize it and it will distract from the quality of the meeting. People may not complain about it, but it will distract from what's going on in the meeting. Similarly, if you're sat there with your headphones in um, and you've got a microphone that comes down here, you need to make sure it's not scraping against your collar because otherwise that's the equivalent of um, you know, sound like that all the time. It's very distracting. You won't be able to hear. It detracts from the um, experience of of the meeting okay and then there's your content and i'm not taking responsibility for the content that's very firmly down to you so here you go i've got a question for you what's uh, in the chat box again what do you think is more important on a call on a remote call like this is it video or is it audio just put in v or a depending on what you think do you think it's video? So lots of people going for video. Almost everyone going for it. one. We've got uh, we've got uh, Huiji uh, going for uh, audio and Sims work going for video. Okay, that's really interesting. Research suggests, and uh, I can't quite cite you the articles just yet, but um, uh, my research from industry, anecdotal research from industry, I should add, is that. Um, if you end up in trouble, um, which we'll go into in a second, but you can probably continue the meeting if you've got audio, but no video. So if I was to um, switch my uh, camera off um, just now, we can continue the meeting as is, no problem. Let me just switch my uh, camera back on again. But if we're talking and all of a sudden, So unless you can lip read, the lack of audio or poor quality audio really detracts from a meeting and it can't really carry on. So you can carry on without video um, as long as you've got decent audio. Hence, I've made the investment to, uh, to an external microphone. OK, right. Now, Meridian uh, diagram, and this is good for in-person um, in the same room or video meetings as well. This is a really important diagram for human communications. And the work, when you see the transcript of this, uh, of this masterclass, um, you'll realize that actually the words that I'm speaking, just the words themselves, represents only 7% of the total communications package, shall we say. The words are only 7%. That means 93% are what we call non-verbal clues. And that breaks down as 38% uh, my vocal tonality going up and coming down, varying my speech, varying the speed of my speech or slowing down to emphasize certain points. That's 38% of the remaining uh, package, if you like. Excuse me. And then 
um, the the visual clues, the body language. We've only got from the chest upwards and a little bit of hands if you gesticulate as I sometimes do. The rest of the time we focus on the face and if we can the eyes um, and that's why we have to really major on getting the lighting as right as possible, making sure if we've got any strong uh, lighting from the side that we compensate for it or pull the brines down. Or what often happens is that some, because many of us are working from home, we'll have a strong backlighting, in which case, you know, the, 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 the camera overexposes for the backlight and your face is really, really dark. In fact, it technically it underexposes. Anyway, so that's the point. So your communications um, are, are multifaceted in, 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 in that respect. Okay, right. So we also have to look at the background. Are there any distractions there? Does it add value or is it a, a detractor? We'll come to um, your thoughts on the following slide in a second. Um, so for example, if you, um, uh, if you have a logo going on in background, then is all of the logo um, in view or is your head um, you know, blocking part of the logo? These are all things you have to think of. I'm using a natural background um, at the moment, but equally I could, uh, I could decide to put on a, um, shall we see, choose virtual background. I could decide to put on a blurred, uh, background if I so chose and I've, I've blurred that now so that I appear in a sharper focus and that's something you can play with. What I think doesn't work um, is if I had a picture of the Golden Gate Bridge or the Hanging Bar Gardens of Babylon in my background it just wouldn't work it would it would not be believable and so it's better to have nothing or a relevant background we'll come on to that in just a uh, just a second. So logos, we talked about that. Adjusting calling. Are you giving the right message? That's that's the point. Is it the right experience that you're trying to give people? And <clears throat> also, you'll have noticed um, uh, if I switch my video off just a second, I should be replaced by a still photo of me. So you you can see my um, photo there. As I think it's a half decent one. It's probably as good as I can uh, kind of hope for, given I'm no George Clooney. Um, but you need to think about, have you uploaded your photo as well? These are all things you need to think of uh, when you're having your, your meetings. So the other important things are, just, again, absence of distractions, so notifications. Have you switched off your mobile or cell phone uh, or, put, or at least put it on silent? Um, on your laptop, if you're on Windows 10, you can switch off notifications. So we're not going to get, you know, bongs of emails coming through because it's very distracting and it's not professional. Uh, and I'm saying that out loud. I'm almost certain mine is switched off now. We'll find out soon enough. Um, but that it just it's a detractor if you're not careful. If you've got an older laptop, switch off um, or close down as many of your apps as possible so that the computer is dedicating, the laptop is dedicating as much of its memory resources as possible as to giving good audio and video uh, dynamics, if you like. And the assumption is, and you need to be careful because we're on camera now. I'm just going to stand up for a second. So if I stand up, you can just about tell I'm wearing trousers um, and that can go either way. So uh, if you are, uh, um, should we say, working Zoom casual, uh, as I call it, uh, then just kind of make sure if you do get up, you either switch your camera off or you're wearing something decent underneath. Let's steer away from that just now, but you wouldn't believe what I've seen over the last um, 18 months or so. Okay, back to the chat box again, excuse me. We've got, this is Politics Live, and I just took this as a snapshot a little while ago. <clears throat> we've got uh, backgrounds or we've got images one, two, five. So if I, if I talk about image number one now, 
Now, this is the BBC. This is Joe Coburn who presents this program um, on, on the BBC. You will expect them to have a highly professional setup. And indeed, you're right. So Joe Coburn's in the studio, but her background is uh, St. Stephen's um, off office block, which is where all the MPs uh, are situated in the United Kingdom Parliament. And that's highly appropriate background for her. In image number two, we've got, uh, I can't remember his family name, but it's Robert. He's an MP and his background, um, I don't know if anyone wants to put into the chat box what they think of that background. I'm just going to give you a few seconds. Do you think it's a good one? Do you think it's not very good? I'd be really interested in what you say. Um, for anyone that's uh, distracting, messy, absolutely. They're all mess, yeah, absolutely. Now, um, you know, I'm, I'm assuming he's not on the call, and that's a reasonable assumption, uh, I guess. But it is real life, William. Yes, you're absolutely right. However, these are all things uh, that... Uh, you've, is that a pile of money on the left? Well, I'll tell you what. If you are a cynic like me and you know the 2009 expenses scandal, you'll see that that's a pile of MPs expense receipts. And that for me is a, uh, a massive dis, uh, distraction. Uh, and it's, it's just right, Some, someone, yeah, bills, yeah, absolutely. It's just, it's just stuff that, you know, we don't need it. It's superfluous to the call. It's de it's distracting and it detracts from the for me for the call quality. As does, frankly, having a headset on. Um, if you can avoid having a headset on, um, do. Uh, I'm very fortunate. I'm the only one that uses this office, so I'm okay. Image number three, uh, I think, is Barry. Barry, I can't remember the surname now. But for me, he's an MP also. You would kind of expect that on uh, Politics Live. Highly appropriate. I can, it's a bit distracting reading the books that are in the background, but an MP seems highly appropriate kind of um, uh, background. It's not particularly distracting. I can concentrate on what Barry's um, saying. He's wearing glasses, by the way. Depending on what glasses you wear, they can emphasize if you've got thick rim glasses like that. That emphasizes the eyes and it encourages it encourages uh, other humans in the meeting to look him in in the eyes. Image number four that's going on a bit old school books equals dead trees. Okay, do you know that's a generational difference? That's a really interesting, William. Thank you, thank you for that. You're absolutely right. It's not Kindle. It's uh, uh, well, that's a really big conversation, you know, physical books and all of that. I'm not going to go down there, but I'll be happy to debate that afterwards. Barry Gardner, thank you, Simon Kelly. Okay, number four. Now, number four is, I can't remember the chap's name, but he's the CEO of a music charity, that uh, artistic, absolutely. So CEO of a music charity, and therefore in, in that person's world in their business in their professional world that's highly relevant it reinforces the brand image <clears throat> excuse me it's an odd camera angle not quite looking up into that person's uh, nostrils but it's definitely below the eye line um, and that's worth bearing uh, that's worth bearing amount good point victoria uh, and then image number five, and the, you can't, but, but it's the uh, the woman in the bottom right of the screen. I don't know if anyone's seen a uh, um, Halloween or Michael Myers type movies, but there's a door over the shoulder. <clears throat> we have a set of gold discs if he's in the mood. For yes, fair point. My guess is uh, they're a CEO of a music charity as opposed to a singer in their own right, but that was the answer. So anyway, I'm I'm sat there looking at image number five, thinking, is someone going to walk in through the door or not? And, and again, they're probably not, but it's a distractor. So those are all the things that we kind of need to uh, be thinking about. Okay, right, I'm going to whiz through Simon if uh, if you're on we're going to take five more minutes to go through this and then we'll probably wrap up and have some uh q a if there are any q a so during that was all before the meeting this is during the meeting the essential components obviously you you are paramount to the meeting experience your content the environmentals we talked about your presentation style 
if you like, is paramount. Uh, I've already done that. We're going to come off of uh, this actually, so you kind of get, we're going to stop share, but I'm going <clears> to <throat> carry on uh, uh, just a bit. So, more welcome Q&A box. Okay, yes, if you've got questions, by all means, put them into the Q&A and then we'll get to them in just a second. So, some of the stuff that can really distract, in fact, this is uh, as correct for in-person um, presentations as for video presentations are um, the dogs and animals that, that you, you will lose straight away if they're dogs or animals. Uh, young children, I mentioned about the, uh, the famous Skype uh, clip with the young child coming in and, and, and the ambassador to South Korea, or technology. You know, technology, especially if you're on video by implication, um, is it's not necessarily the speed of your broadband coming into your property, uh, be it an apartment or a house or whatever it is, it's the quality of Wi-Fi, assuming you're connecting from Wi-Fi. Um, we've got two or three walls between my uh, apart, uh, my office here and where the router comes in. So I've actually got a, uh, a range, a, a Wi-Fi extender in my, it's about 50 quid, um, or 50 pounds, I beg your pardon. And that just um, really helps with a consistent, decent um, quality Wi Fi signal. And it, it just, and the other thing is, I was on a, a call with the Bank of England a, uh, a while ago. I do some work for them from time to time. And uh, my, my wife had a bit of downtime. She brought in a cup of tea. And, uh, and, uh, th those are distra very welcome distraction, but a distraction sort of nonetheless. But this is real life, as someone, I think it was William that pointed that out. And also, if you've got children around the house or, or, or spouses that do lots of gaming, you know, are they eating into all the bandwidth? So when we first um, started working remotely, my, my wife is a senior civil servant was on multiple video calls we would have to prioritize you know at 11 o'clock she's gonna have priority over video bandwidth but at 12 o'clock i need it we would have to schedule we've got a different setup now different provider and and all the rest of it and so that's that's not such a uh, an issue but if you if if your wi-fi is all being eaten up elsewhere then that can be a real detractor and you sometimes even have to abandon the uh, abandon the meeting. Okay, so during the uh, the meeting, this is how to have a good meeting. Uh, it's only three things. What do you want the other person or people to say, do, or agree as a result of you having the video meeting or conference call? What do you want them to say, do, or agree? That's what the mindset that you need to get to be in. Or put another way. What, so what, now what? In order to ensure that you capture everything you need to capture for the meeting. When you're talking, look directly into the camera. Um, your distance from the screen, your head should take up approximately a third of the camera surface area, ideally so that people can see your eyes and your face and they can receive those nonverbal uh, clues. And because we're on video, not in the room, we have to amplify, we have to emphasize our words, we have to emphasize our body language, our eye contact, all of those things. So this is me looking into the camera now. And, uh, oh, here we go, please share my screen again. Okay, right, well, um, I was coming off of a uh, shared screen for a, a particular reason, but we'll do that again, <coughs> excuse me. All right, so we're back on shared. So um, we have to amplify uh, what we're doing. This is me looking into the camera while I'm talking, but while I'm listening, I can afford to look at my screen. I'm not looking you in the eyes, uh, but I can afford to look at my screen. So I'm getting as much communication flow as possible, but it's not much of a distraction uh, if I'm looking down here where the images actually are. What's important is that when it's time for you to talk, you then look into the camera and you, you talk into the camera lens and then it feels to the other person, hopefully everyone on this call, that I'm talking directly to you now because I'm looking into the camera lens. The disadvantage when you're talking like that is 
everyone else, what, what they're doing on the screen is in your peripheral vision down here or up here, wherever you've got your screen, uh, something that we have to get used to if we're going to communicate effectively on video. Okay. And when you're not talking, okay, we've already done that. When you're not talking, keep your mic muted as we all are now. Uh, and then you don't have to worry about extraneous noises. Uh, it's okay to look at who's talking, long as when you're talking, you're looking into the camera. You can also, um, if you're on mute, you can just press your space bar if you just need to say yes, no, you know, two sugars, whatever it happens to be. You don't have to look for the mute switch, you can just press the space bar. Certainly that's true for Zoom. Um, and also if someone's asking a question like, can you see my presentation okay? Rather than talking, uh, and to avoid audio conflict where the audio waves are going to conflict with each other, just give a thumbs up or press one of the reactions or so. Okay, I'm going to start winding up now, Simon, if, if that's okay. So be in command of your stuff. Use silence where necessary. It can be really, really powerful. Um, one other thing, last uh, sort of tip before I start wrapping up is if, especially on interviews or client presentations, if you're asked a question which really flummoxes you, which really causes you to think, and you think, oh my goodness, if only I had a few seconds to get my thoughts in order, what you can do is you can lean back, you can uh, and look away from the camera and you're breaking eye contact. You, if you wanna be really professional, you would even say, that's a great question, Simon. Can I just have a few seconds to think about that? And you look away, breaking eye contact, count to five, get your thoughts in order, and then lean back in, re-establish eye contact, and then re-engage in the question and give the answers that Simon needs. That, that's a really professional approach for uh, getting back onto the call. And the last thing you want to do also is say something like, I haven't seen these slides before, someone else did them. That's an instant turn off at the start of any presentation is to acknowledge something like that. That's it's just not good. So Wi-Fi issues, turn your camera off if there's a problem with your network so you've at least got the audio, which is the most important part of a, uh, a, a remote meeting experience. Consider a network extender to reduce the risk of losing all that bandwidth, lean back, if you're stressed or flummoxed, and we are in York, by the way, and broadband in the centre of York, and I live just off Warngate, broadband is notoriously, uh, is about as ancient, frankly, as the city. Okay, so you can follow me. It's my website. If you subscribe to the website, I can send you an ebook on top to seven top tips for video uh, calls. I'm happy to do that. It's free of charge. What you get for subscribing. We've already done these things. I'm just going to whiz this, through this now. And if I may, uh, hand you back to uh, Simon's, capable, Simon's capable hands, if that's okay. Simon, do you want to come off of, uh, of, of mute and uh, pick up here? Thank you very much, Keith. Um, I think it's taught me about, about a thousand things I'm doing wrong. Um, <laughs> and I had to move from a kitchen uh, to this untidy bookshelf room because uh, apparently it was a bit echoey earlier. So, and now the lighting's terrible in here. Anyway, uh, thanks a lot. Um, I've got a few questions in the Q and A. Um, first one: How do you? This was one I'd got up my sleeve uh, in case uh, nobody asked it, but uh, it must be the burning uh, question for everybody. Uh, how do you handle people who switch off video during a call? For example, missing visual cues, e.g. facial expression. Right. Well, that, well, that, well, that depends upon the relative power of the people in the meeting. So if it's just me and Simon, Simon, if with the greatest of respect, we are peers, if you don't mind me saying so, I would feel really comfortable. In fact, because I'm, because I'm me, uh, I don't care if it's the PM that we're on with, I would say, would you mind sw switching your camera on, please, to uh, so we can communicate effectively, just to ask. Most people will say, uh, thanks, Grant, appreciate that feedback. Most people will say, yeah, oh, yes, of course. 
Uh, some people, and I have to say as a professional manager and I'm doing a piece of work for a big telco, I think I have a duty of care over my direct reports and everyone that works in my organization to do what I might call a, uh, a health check, if you like. I'm not a mental health professional, but I have a duty of care over my team to make sure they're okay. So certainly at least once a week, I would expect to see them with their camera on um, so that I can see that they're as well as possible. Some people are working in very difficult conditions. I'm lucky I've got my own space. Some people have been working on the end of a bed for 18 months and you know they can't wait to get back in the office so just ask them uh be polite would you mind switching on the camera please 90 percent of the time they will mm -hmm. um thank you uh, david booth's asked a question here there seems to be a wide range of prices for green screens for a home office laptop or pc working environment what are the key quality attributes to look for what of a, of a green screen was that yeah. Oh, that's a really good one, actually. Um, well, you could, uh, a friend of mine got, uh, I'm not a big fan of buying from Amazon, but for simplicity and convenience, let's use that as an example. You can get them on Amazon for about 10, 10 pounds. They're uh, like a, almost like a yoga mat that unzips and they stand up behind you. You can get them varying for about uh, 10 pounds. But equally, my, my blurred, background that I've got here is free and uh, and I'm really comfortable with that the one thing about having a blurred background is it gives you a sense of what's going on in people's lives which has been one of the more interesting aspects of working uh, remotely you can see into an MP's house or you know Judy Dench or whoever it might be you can kind of, that's interesting for people like me uh, but you can't see everything. It's blurred. It's just a bit of intrigue there, and I think that's there's probably um, there's probably some uh, something chimp uh, going on in the back of uh, one's mind for that. So it's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, Carlos, have you got any particular uh, expertise in this green screen piece? Okay, um, I'll take I'll take the next question here which is from anonymous attendee which is a very literal name I'd like to have that myself which is uh, how important is it to use the whiteboard do you know something I, I i think unless you can use something with a plum you shouldn't use it so if you're really you're really comfortable that you can use a, a whiteboard really professionally. I think you should absolutely do it. It's, it's, uh, I have to say I've not mastered it, which is why I don't use it. Uh, maybe I can invest some time in doing In fact, whoever asked that question, maybe they can teach me. Um, but uh, uh, unless you can use it really, really well, then I've, I've tended from the point of view of risk and reputational sort of issues, if you like, I've tended to steer clear of it. Um, but getting your point across is really, really important. So all that intellectual thought and rigor around me putting um, an image up there and being able to find the right image to talk about lighting, to talk about microphones and all of that, I put a lot of thought into how to construct that image and get the animation just right. It wasn't to show off my PowerPoint skills, it was to make sure I was making the point and then trying it out on others beforehand just to make sure it would translate. But if you know how to use the whiteboard really successfully, more power to you. Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely with you there, Keith, on the point of uh, don't sort of up the risk level for yourself uh, by, by taking some technology on board into a meeting unless you've got some level of mastery on it, yeah? Yeah. Um, just one more like, technical question, I think, because obviously I spent a lot of time talking uh, around the environmental, so some of the questions are focus on that. So um, William asks, um, what are your thoughts on white background? Safe? Too bland? Oh, I think you look like a hostage. If, you, if you've got a white background, as soon as I see hot, uh, white backgrounds, I think... Uh, I think hostage and, and I've got that thought in my head and I can't get away from it. So I would, 
I would tend to um, uh, I would tend to steer clear of that. The uh, the blurb I go, and if you have one, you can't often can't help your surroundings, but it's important to be aware of what is going on. Uh, I put on the blurred background. It's it costs nothing, um, and it's on Zoom and Teams and all of those things. I'd go with blurred. Mm -hmm. Um. This is a question I had in my mind as you were working through the presentation, which which did uh, focus, you know, rightly so, a lot on the technicals and the environment. But um, you know, you'll know this um, better than anybody on this call, I would suspect. But you know, I know from my own research that fifty eight percent of sales deals in business to business end in no deal because um, the person who's trying to make the sale um, doesn't in the end convince the customer uh, that there's enough value in moving from from what they've got now to to what they could have in the future um i, I know this thing about seven percent content I, i've seen that quite quite a bit uh, um but, but how do you think that plays out in these calls the whole sort of exchange of value the value proposition bit yeah well i'm surprised the number's only 58.2 percent actually um uh, been, you know, that's the number that's in the round and it will be very different from each company to company. Mm -hmm. For me, a sale, because that's what presenting is, you're going to move someone to your point of view, is a, a sale is the natural conclusion to a well-qualified, well-constructed solution, if you like. So if you are, if you're failing to make sales, and this is a really big subject, if you're failing to make sales, you have to look at, are you getting the right kind of leads? Are you, therefore, is your marketing, are your marketing messages uh, the right kind of messages? Because nobody wants leads for leads sake. You want well-qualified leads that stand a reasonable chance of prosecution, so to speak. Um, that, that's my um, initial response, response to that. But giving yourself every opportunity to create the best impression um, must surely lie at the heart of that. And also, Simon, I hope this is something you agree with. Uh, uh, listen more than you talk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You yeah. can't learn anything about a prospect or a client by, by talking all the time. You've got to ask great questions and get them talking about their problems. Sure. Great. Carlos, do, do you want to wrap up or have we got time for one more question? I think with two minutes left, uh, I think we need just to call that to um, an end. But, you know, time flew. I think it was like 4 p.m. like one minute ago. I mean, it was so fast. Uh, I so much enjoyed that. And uh, also, I like the question that Simon actually asked, the last one, how you link that with sales, which is, of course, something very relevant to his presentation. So I would like just, uh, again, to thank uh, very much, Keith, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for sharing with us your uh, your thoughts on this. That was a really, really topical presentation, which is actually reflects the new reality that we are facing all of us in terms of communication, both personal and professional. I really liked all your examples that you shared with us. And um, I think we had some very, very good questions at the end that uh, also um, helped us to understand even better uh, the content of your presentation. So, uh, Keith, thank you so much for uh, for being with us here today. Very welcome. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks for hosting me, Carolos and Simon. Really appreciate that. And thank you for all the uh, engagement in the uh, in in the chat box. I will, um, if I may, Carolos, save that. And if there are any questions which I haven't got to, perhaps I can do a follow up. Absolutely, I will pass them on to you. And also I would like to thank uh, Dr. Simon Kelly, our colleague here at the University of York Management School for hosting and moderating this discussion. So thank you very much, Simon. Thank you, Carlos. So thank you, Keith. And that's it, I think, from us. So thanks everyone for attending this masterclass. There are more to come. Please check on our website and the york.ac.uk um, uh, events and uh, all shirts like uh, for management school events and there are more to come. Uh, the next one is on the 20th of October on campus, what's really like to run an online gambling business by Richard Flint, uh, non-executive director of Flutter. So thank you so much and have a nice evening and I will just stop the recording here now.
Thank you very much, everyone.